<laughs> All right, hello everybody. I've got some fresh new goodies to look at and use today to try them out, see how it goes. I've gotten a lot of different pens in the mail over the years. Fountain dip brush, glass bic pens, horse elephant tentacle, whatever this thing is. But today we have some pens and some sketchbooks sent to me by luxurybrandsusa.com and we're gonna look at the pens, review them, see what's up, see what's down, see what's going on. And we're gonna look at the sketchbooks, see if they're worth sketching in, writing in, recording our deepest, darkest, innermost feelings to later post on the internet. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Uh, this first pen we're gonna look at, they come in a nice box, a little cover on it. Pop this sucker open. A little cover on here. Very squishy and cushy. A little card in there. It says made in Italy, the components, the entire workmanship, blah, blah, blah. Uh huh. Now, right off the bat, I will say that it does feel nice and heavy. I like the, the oomph, the weight. It rests in your hand well. It doesn't feel cheap. I do like the like the workmanship of this. I'm gonna, I don't know if workmanship is the right word, but I can tell it's been like well machined out of out of like solid metal or something here. I like that. This one in a similarly constructed box it says Mocha on there. Slides right off. It says Giuliano Matsuwali. Probably saying that wrong. Comes right open. Another foam thing on top. Pop that off. Some more goodies in here. Something in a plastic bag. And then in here we have the pen itself, which is even heavier and more weighty in my hand than the last one. I like it. I like it a lot. And once again, it. I just like how, like, I don't know the words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, there's nine sides to this pen. It's a, it's a non-agonal pen, and but the edges here are so crisp and sharp. That appeals to me. This once again can thread onto the front or the back. That's a good look. I like that. But it's just yeah, it feels well made. It feels heavy in my hand. I do like I do like how this pen looks and feels though. It's a little bit a little bit I feel like a little bit more has gone into the design of these pens, how they look, how they feel than a lot of my other fountain pens which are mostly utilitarian. And we'll have to wait and see if that's a good thing or a bad thing. If they only look good and don't work well, then it'll be a bad thing. But if they look good and also work well, then I'm all for it. Or we also got some sketchbooks from them. Uh, the thing I like about these sketchbooks, as you can see here, they have several different designs as far as covers go. I'm sure they have much more designs for sale on their website somewhere. Is that whether you're using the small one um, or the big ones, they all have this pocket in the back, of course, which seems to be kind of popular and trendy. And a common thing to do with sketchbooks these days. You know, moleskins have the pocket in the back. Most importantly, I like this part of the, the cover. If you can see how this bends right here. Maybe that's where the, the word Stiflexible comes from, which is part of their brand name. Which makes it very easy to flip through the pages like this. It's a hard cover sketchbook, but it has these articulated points in it. As you can see here, they make points in the front for it to bend and that makes it easy to flip through your sketchbook. You couldn't really do that as well with a hardcover sketchbook unless you flip the cover open and started flipping like this, which I guess isn't the end of the world. You can still do it both ways. I don't know if it's like a thing you've got to have, but it's definitely something I haven't seen in a sketchbook before. All of these sketchbooks, as I look through them, I notice that uh, in the beginning they have lined pages and then farther near the back they have a section of blank pages, which is labeled here like so. And then even behind that, they have some graph paper pages. 
which they've labeled post it for some reason. I don't know, you're supposed to put post it notes here or something? I'm not sure why they call that post it. I don't know why it doesn't just say graph here. Maybe I'm missing something obvious. I do like the variation in, in, in paper types or lined, unlined, whatever. I like that. As you can see here, there's another pocket in the back of the big one and you can flip through it like this. Might be useful for you, might not be, depending on what it is you're trying to do with your sketchbooks. But I do like the feel of the sketchbooks. They just feel like, sometimes you just know by the feel of sketchbook whether you want to put a lot of things in it. It feels good. I like how it feels like in your hand. I'm not sure what else to say. All right, let's try out the pen. Let's try out the pen. I'm gonna try it out in uh, a little bit in this little sketchbook, right? You can, you can draw quick lines or you can draw slow ones and stuff. If you press down, the line gets wider. Or if you don't press at all, the lines are a little thinner. I do want to draw a little bit with these pens, but first I want to pop this ink cartridge out and put it in this pen over here. Seems to work pretty well as well. Almost identical in every conceivable way, even though the tip doesn't look completely identical. I don't notice any functional differences as far as drawing lines. It might be a little bit more flexible than the other one, that's all. All right, let's draw a picture with these now. I think I'll use this one since it's the one I have with ink in it right now. I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't until after I finished recording this video uh, or the intro to it that I looked up the actual pens on their website and found out how expensive these pens were. The notebooks do seem reasonably priced, like, you know, $10, 10 to $15 ish range, depending on which size you get or whatever. But the pens, you know, they're $100, $150, which seems like something I am, I feel totally removed from in the world. I just don't really know how to relate to that. $100 fountain pens. I guess that's just some, what, what, what do you get those for? Uh, a gift for your father-in-law's birthday or something? It feels kind of impersonal, you know, like, like you're thinking of someone, you know, you want them to know you, you know, you're spending money on them, but you don't really know them well enough to get them something they really like or, or something. I don't know, because you can get these pens, these pens, they have these same pen tips, right? As far as drawing materials and art supplies, the same pen tips come on, uh, you know, obviously, much cheaper pens. What you're paying for here is uh, the, de the designer name, the Giuliano Matsuali or whatever, and the construction of the actual pen body, which I'm sure is exceptional. Uh, but I personally am more concerned with and care about uh, the art art making and art supplies. And as far as uh, drawing and making making art, you don't need really expensive pens like this. Probably the most expensive pens I, I now given I do use some expensive pens like my Rotring Isographs that I use on almost a daily basis. Those are 20 or $30 each, which is pretty excessive when it comes to pens, especially when you can get like, you know, Bic pens and stuff like that. But those uh, you know, those are still very, I think, I think the price is justified because you can't get it any cheaper than that. And I don't know, maybe it's not justified because I still could be using big pens. I do like using big pens sometimes. Maybe I'm undermining my own argument, but you guys know what I mean? I mean, these are cool pens. They're pretty, they feel good. They draw lines, but they also draw lines just like, uh, you know, like a Lamy Safari or a, one of those Twisby Ecos, some of the other pens I've gotten. Uh, you know, fountain pens I've gotten in the past that are, you know, 20 or $30. So I'm not really sure what to say. They're cool. I like them. And I managed to draw this picture. I like doing these diagrams. Um, definitely somewhat influenced by the Codex Serafinius, which I do have a, one of those big copies of. But I liked um, doing diagrams and looking at diagrams of almost anything, uh, even before I knew about that book and all through my childhood growing up um you guys ever look at those books of those 
those huge oversized books I would get from the library of cross sections of castles and, and ships and oil rigs and stuff. Those were some of my favorite diagrams. And also I, I like looking at diagrams of almost anything else as long as it was you know nice hand drawn and as soon as I started getting into drawing I liked looking at diagrams because diagrams are so uh but just by the nature of them they have to be so precise and so the line work is almost always so good you know you go to drafting class I did take one drafting class in high school um and they teach you you know that you gotta you gotta they teach you techniques you know for keeping, you know, drawing clean lines, and they teach you how to, like, draw clean letters so it's all readable and everything. Granted, most of drafting these days is done with CAD, you know, computer-aided drafting, but the first half of the first class, or the first course you take, at least, is, you know, by hand, you know. I feel like that's how you get, you know, lay the foundation. you got to draw everything by hand, and then you get to log into the computer for the first time in the second semester. And so diagrams, I don't know, maybe that did influence my, uh, my drawing style as it progressed and evolved over the years. But I do like diagrams. Is that the right word for it? Diagrams. And then as far as using like some weird alien language like this, it's either that, I like using the alien language, or just labeling it with other nonsensical things. It's almost the same thing. Uh, writing, writing English and not having it make sense because the labels either don't apply to anything or it's a it's a doodle it's a drawing of something that doesn't make sense and the and and the words don't really match up with anything that's going on in the drawing or little little alien words or symbols that also don't make sense just because you don't know how to read them uh it just sits you it makes you sit there and wonder like what's going on it, it takes you back to your childhood uh when you would look at things and you didn't understand things just because you were a kid and you just had to sit there and wonder. That's all you could do. That was it. If you buy the Codex Seraphinius, there is a little booklet in like a little pocket in the back of it uh, in which uh, the guy who makes it uh, explains his thoughts behind it. And he says some things kind of like that, like going back to that, that age of awe and wonder when you were a kid and you were just looking at things, you didn't understand any of it. Uh, which I really agree with, and I, and I had been thinking that for a long time, but I just hadn't ever put it into so many words. And uh, anyways, I don't, I don't know if I really like uh, reviewing like big, um, unsurmount, like unattainable, expensive things from weird companies like this. To be honest, uh, maybe I should. Uh, you know, what do you guys think I should review? Let me know. Uh, I could, I could review anything. Um, uh, apples, shoes different types of ducks. Um, I could, I mean, I kind of review pens sometimes. I don't know. All right, let me know. Uh, I'm going to go get a, I think I'm going to go get a meatball sandwich now. A meatball sub. Uh, that sounds good. Time for breakfast, you know? All right, goodbye everybody. Take care.